Hello there. So, in my quest to record and finish the entire Better Call Saul Season 2 today is underway. We are one from four, ladies and gentlemen. We just finished recording Episode 7, and now I'm going to record Episode 8. And for you guys, it's probably a new day, unless I decide to be ridiculous and do a double upload. We'll see. But what's going on, guys? My name is Ellie Moses, a 23-year-old law field student here for Sydney, Australia. Shooting his shot, baby. Yes, we are watching Better Call Saul together for the first time, ladies and gentlemen. And if I'm not going to lie... I'm kind of liking the show more than Breaking Bad. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm just, I, I'm going to have to say it. I don't know if that's because of the background I come from, but like, it is what it is. I'm just going to be honest. It is what it is. But yeah, this episode is titled Fifi um, or Fifi or Fifi, whatever. But yeah, we're going to watch it. We're going to have some fun. And let's smash it. Let's go. Fifi, do you love me? <laughs> Ah, border situations. Let's go, smuggling. This has all been one take so far, and I'm loving it. I love how the camera sort of started following the truck and then immediately the truck went off. Yeah, and now the same's done with the police car. We're following the police car, now we're leading somewhere else. This whole one take scene is basically the definition of don't let them know your next move. <laughs> Unlucky, brother. Still one take. Really? You're gonna make him do the heavy lifting? Really? Really? Is that how border, tr border patrol works? Really? You just took it out of his truck and now you're making him unload it again? <laughs> that was a celebratory ice cream right there. <laughs> now you put that letter into Howard's office tonight. It's on his premises. You've officially given notice tomorrow morning while he's still out on the back nine chasing his balls. Wait, the doghouse. Was that in Breaking Bad? Was there a couple scenes with Jesse and a homeless man near the doghouse? Or was it in this show and I've just recognized it again in the show? Oh man! You Mesa Verde and your other clients, you bring them along. You get to them before he does. No. What? No! You gotta act now. I want to see what the offer is from Schweiker and Coakley as well. I just want to see, out of curiosity. Hey Kim, can we make this quick? I'm kind of swamped right now. Uh, sure. Thanks for meeting with me. I only need a few minutes. Great. What's up? Can we do it in your office? Howard, could we do this in your office? <laughs> Please? Brother! 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 Again, thanks for taking the time. You can just go ahead and rip off the band-aid. I have a pretty good idea why you're here. Oh, he knows of the offer already. <laughs> so, you're going with Schweiger and Coakley. I'm sorry? I heard. Through the grapevine. I'm not going to another firm. 
Remember, don't let them know your next move. That's the theme of the episode already with the one take shot at the beginning of the episode. Don't let them know your next move. I'm starting my own. I figured I'd try giving it a go as a solo practitioner. Well, I, uh, wow. I realized it was something I needed to do. The week Jimmy exits Davis in Maine, you decide to leave us? That can't just be happenstance. It's not. We're going to be sharing expenses. One office, but two separate practices. He doesn't need to know that. On several counts. I want you to know that I appreciate my time here. I'm grateful for everything you and the firm have done for me, especially the financial help with my schooling. And I'm ready to write a check for the remainder of the loan. I just need accounting to get me that figure. No need. Our gift to you. I don't know what to say. Um, thank you. You earned it. Tell you the truth, I'm kind of envious. Really? Why? Something about a fresh start. Back in the day, right out of law school, I thought long and hard about hanging up my own shingle. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I was ready to take on the world, make a difference. Dad talked me out of it. Wanted me to join the ranks here, throw another H in the firm's logo. Things work out the way they're supposed to, I guess. Kim, I want you to know that I always pushed you harder because I knew that I could expect more from you. Good luck to you. Thank you. She's glad she got that out. Oh, you motherfucker. Calling now. I was legit about to say, I was, I was legit about to say, like, listen, you know what, Howard? I, I, Howard, I, I don't know why, the way I'm talking, like, I just get excited. But I was like, I, I, Howard, like, maybe, I guess when he saw that um, Kim was, you know, kind of um, not accepting the Schweiker and Coakley uh, offer, he's like, okay, maybe, I, I felt like he, he, he had a little bit of more respect for her, you know, taking that risk, going down her own path, because I felt like, Howard wanted to do that at that time. And I feel like he was being really honest there about being envious of her. And I was like, okay, you know what, Howard? You're being honest. It's like a decent send-off. It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Um, and yeah, because you could see when he, um, when Kim entered, um, he, I, I, I picked it out that obviously he was aware of the offer and he just wanted to get it over and done with. Like he knew why she was there. But I guess that was a little bit of a curveball she threw in and he kind of respected that. Um but at the same time, as soon as she left the office, you hear that, you know, that slight um, inaudible dialogue. You hear it um, as he talks to his PA and is like, yeah, get me Mesa, Mesa Verde because, you know what, he's trying to lock up them clients, baby. Um, you know, Kim Wexler is leaving and we're getting a new associate on the matter. He, even, he probably hasn't even said to the associate um, or have, have probably picked out the associate in mind that he wants to get on the case now, but he's just locking it up just to inform them. <laughs> Unless Kim is trying to do that as well. Sorry. Excuse me. Hi, Paige. It's Kim. Yeah, yep, hi. there we go. Just checking that we're still on for lunch on Monday. Great. And Kevin, too? Wait, so who got Good. there first? Well, before we meet, there's some news you need to know about. <laughs> she went to the Bryce Dallas Howard of School of Running in High Hills. Record time. So that is proof you can outrun a T-Rex in High Hills. But yeah. I believe, however, that I am the right choice. Why? That suit you're wearing, did you buy it off the rack? Please don't tell me it looks like I did. <laughs> if it did, I wouldn't have asked. So why do you prefer a tailor-made suit? Because it fits you and you alone. Because each and every stitch was fretted over with you in mind. That's a hell of a lot of sewing. How's one single tailor going to get that job done? I know your bank's needs in regard to this expansion inside and out. 
off topic can someone find me the account of this woman like here right here right here <laughs> Yo, she is stunning. Teresa Verde is my sole client. Will take up the entirety of my attention, to be sure. But if this were beyond my abilities, I wouldn't be throwing my hat in the ring. I would not waste your time or mine. If they do decide to go with Kim, just quickly, um, I remember Chuck when he was discussing the case with Howard. He talked about like all the parties that were going to be involved, all the sort of, um, I can't remember what he was like. It was a massive case, basically the, uh, the Mesa, Mesa Verde one. Like he was talking about who's going to be involved, all the law firms, all the tribunals and things like that. So, um, this is going to be a lot to handle for Kim if she does eventually get it and they stay with her because, um, it, she might be biting off more than she can chew. I don't know. I don't know. But like, I'm just, just thinking to back back to what chuck said and oh, hey, Kim, hhm here. has the resources to deal with those type of things i think it's a it's a dentist office two offices for two dentists each the exact same size with a mirrored layout here the other one is the next door over right beside this one <laughs> right here also Soundproof walls, what with the drilling and the pain and the whatnot. And the location, I mean, holy crap, I think this is the place. Needs a little bit of touching up, but could be, could be renovated. Yeah, it's great, soundproofing. Bad lunch, huh? Mesa Verde said no. They said yes! Okay, I'm getting mixed things <laughs> here. Yeah. Is this a good? Jimmy, I got it. You got Mesa Verde? Yes. I mean, there's nothing in writing yet, but the lunch went. It, it kicked ass. <laughs> <laughs> it was a little touch and go there for a moment, I'll admit, but Paige pitched in and she really talked me up. And then once that door cracked open. High five. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I have the answer for every question. Every concern, and I did not badmouth HHM, not at all, but I was like enthusiasm, you know, and personal service because that's got to count for something. Shit, yeah, that counts. That's what happens when you believe in yourself and I mean, what you're worth. Why were they even at HHM in the first place? Me. So, uh, oh, and then when we walked out of the restaurant, when Kevin wasn't looking, Paige gives me a thumbs up, but not, not the regular thumbs up, the double thumbs up. Two. Double barrel. Boom, boom. Just like that. I knew it. I knew you could do it. Was, it. It's just. It's cool. It was perfect. It's cool and all, but let's get this shit down in writing, all right? Like, it's all cool people saying stuff on face value and saying everything in word, but trust me, get that thing down in writing, get it confirmed, get it in contract because people double cross you. And knowing this show, knowing the universe, you twists and turns could pop up. <laughs> yeah. Ernesto, the door is open. As always. Leave Ernie alone. Yeah, Ernesto? It's me, Chuck. Oh, hey, Howard, is Ernesto with you? No, it's just me. Well, I expected a round of documents an hour ago. You know, we've got a filing coming up. I know, Chuck. It's very possible. It's likely. <laughs> losing Mesa Verde. <laughs> losing them. We just got them. Where's she going? Is it Rich Schweigert? Or Reeves and Green yet? Not another firm. She's going into private practice. What? Well, that's completely... How is she going out on her own? Why is she going out on her own? Well, the why is the why. The how is that she's pooling her resources. With Jimmy. <laughs> I can see where this is going. I told you, it's going to be a tag team title match at the WrestleMania, baby. I, I don't know which reaction I said it in, um, and I can't remember if I uploaded it yet, but I told you, it's gonna, this is going to be not a regular tag team title match, all right? You, to win this match, you got to climb the ladders and get the tables yourself. So any dirty tactics, any freaking kendo sticks, any freaking ladders, tables, chairs, it's all, it, it's all licensed, baby. It's all legal. Anything goes. Any low blows can be dealt. It's, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> Him and my brother, partners at law. 
If you have any details, any arguments, bullet point them for me now, because I got about an hour before I have to get back. Chuck, I really need your help here. I'm coming with you. Chuck, <clears throat> I will make it through. Ah, oh, Chuck, man, Chuck, Chuck. If, if they spin this around and get Mesa Verde, it's crazy how it makes you root for clients in this show as well. Like, come on, man. Yeah, who did, man thinks he's walking around with a caped. Like, who does he think he is? It's the little, it's the micro expressions, the mannerisms, those little things that making it all about him. Not, not making it all about him. So, yeah, he is, he is, he is. Hello, everyone. I'm sorry I was delayed. Oh, not at all. We just sat down. Hi. Kevin Wachtel, Paige Novick. This is Charles McGill. Chuck. Pleasure. Kevin, Paige. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. You've done your time as far as I'm concerned. What hard sell. It was enthusiasm. I gave them cookies. Cookies were good, as I recall. <laughs> No, I'm here to put your minds at ease. Kim Wexler is indeed the right choice to handle Mesa Verde. She's the obvious choice. She's young. She's brilliant. She's going places. Let's face it, Howard. She's the future. Two old guys like us, we're the past. Well, that's a sad thought. <laughs> sad but true. What are you playing at, Chuck? Banking law needs to be exciting. It needs the next generation to come along and give it a big old kick in the seat of the pants. Really wake it up. I mean, when you've specialized in this kind of work for decades on end, you tend to get kind of... Stale. Stale. You get stale. You forget about things like, oh, I don't know, the Community Reinvestment Act. Any bank such as Mesa Verde looking to open a de novo branch is definitely going to need to show a healthy portfolio of CRA compliance. Duh. <laughs> Obviously. You guys have all that covered, I'm sure. Regal Neal, Interstate Banking and Branching Efficiency Act. There's another mouthful, huh? Boring. I, I, I they're, they're good, they're good. I'm not gonna lie, like, you gotta give respect to the other side. Whereas, dude, they're good. They're good at their shit, okay? They're good at what they do. I, 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 I might not stand the guys, but they're good at what they do. All right, they came with the right tactic right here. You know, explain the boring stuff, and basically, yeah, Chuck, get a life, man. But like, listen, he he came with the right facts, and it seems like Mesa Verde. You saw that look between, I think it's Kevin and Paige right there, um, about you know having the healthy records, and you know there might have been a little bit of doubt there that maybe these guys, the old veterans, can pull it off. Um, and yeah, I'm loving this chat at the moment. And I love how the camera, um, it was sort of like, it's a medium, sh it's like a medium close up for Howard, but a close up for Chuck right there. And it kept racking in and out of focus between the two, depending on who was responding. Um, and I really enjoyed that right there. Still, if you were to run afoul of it, it could hold you up in court for years. And by the way, uh, if that were to happen to you folks as you go forward without us, which it will not. Um, <laughs> Howard has contacts at the Fed who could help sort things out. One or two. Mm -hmm. Navigating uh, that correctly could mean savings of several hundred thousand dollars. They know that, Howard. Oh. <laughs> I apologize. When you reach your golden years, you tend to get a little long-winded, ramble on and on about details. My point being, your bank is in excellent hands. They pulled it off. I think they pulled it off. See, Kim, Kim might have provided, like, the great enthusiastic lawyer and uh, sort of the great enthusiastic lawyer friendly chat. And it was right from Chuck. Like, he played his cards right, like, really well there to open up with Kim's a fantastic lawyer. She's going places. But these guys provided the factual truths, like, their situation. They outlined it well. Relevant, uh, you know, references to cases, acts, right? There multiple acts as well. And I, I don't know, in the US, because of all the multiple states, I guess is, yeah, each state has its own. But uh, I guess this being a bank, um, it's like federal legislation. So uh, yeah, he came really, he came really hard right there, Chuck, and he nailed it. And you even saw the like, my, like, like I said, the micro expressions in this show is fantastic. Even from uh, Howard in the beginning, some of his reactions to Chuck about what he was playing at, 
and it sort of like reminded me Howard and Chuck are basically the antithesis of Kim and um uh Jimmy in my opinion and Jimmy and Kim bounce well off one another and you saw last episode when Kim you know pulled off oh sorry in episode six when Kim called Jimmy to you know um talk or like you know we had hook, line, and sinker. We got bait to do the guy about the check and sort of starting their own sort of foundation right there on website. Um, they bounce well off one another. We know Ch uh, Jimmy and Kim bounce well off one another. But um, And in that scene right there, you saw how Jimmy had to improvise when Kim went to the bathroom and the guy was asking her, uh, Jimmy asked the guy, you know, what was she on about? And then he sort of had to improvise on the spot. And here, I think it's showing well that Howard and Chuck can you know do the same as well even though it's not as exciting they can do the same they can bounce off one another really well look i take your point i do but i have to say i have complete confidence in miss wexler okay you should she was part of our team she learned from us you won't find better than kim wexler but no matter how talented one individual may be the needs of Mesa Verde are too big to handle alone. I was legit I saying that before about alone. the resources. Which is why you should consider, once again, enlisting a team of professionals. And we did this. That little smirk. Anytime. We are there for you, day and night. Shut up. You, Paige. And you, thank you. Man I'll thinks he's Kid Cudi, day and night. Like, shut up, bro. Chuck? That. <laughs> That was amazing. You were fantastic. Truly. Oh, Chuck? Stop milking it. Get me home. Ernie. Hang on. Bro, it's like he used all his superpowers in that room and he's like, oh, no. Well, I am glad to be of service. And here she is. Gentlemen. Oh, it's the name Fifi, of the plane. <laughs> the world's last airworthy B-29 Fifi. <laughs> Based in Texas. She's Major Theodore Fudge Talbot. His mom used to mail him care packages of fudge during the war, and he shared them with his friends. So that's the story. <laughs> yeah. well, sir, 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 memories for you. The reaction of the crew, they're like, what? Too many to count, he says. And I got to say, Major Talbot, it's a privilege. So thank you for your service. <laughs> He says you're welcome. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh boy, I envy you guys. I mean, the stories you must have heard. Do you remember any good ones? Bombing stuff. Bombing stuff. <laughs> like, um, like war. <laughs> did he fly over the hump or did he take off out of India? Hey. <laughs> you doing okay? You need some water? <laughs> yes. yes, sir. Yo, the antiques. Oh. Yeah. That's the colorful <laughs> stuff, baby. Oh, hey. I can run back to the office, get him a bottle. You could, Fudge, the captain's gonna run back to his office, get you some water, okay, sir? Wait, and there's no rush. He's gonna be fine. I'll be back ASAP. This young captain, he's been taken advantage of, and I feel so bad. He's, he's probably so excited to meet a war veteran. And... I told you not to say anything. Let's go stand by the front. <laughs> Knows, whatever. Where the hell did you find this guy? You couldn't get a real war hero? <laughs> yeah, like they grow on trees. So this guy owes me. I defended him a while back when he couldn't pay. Defend him for what? What? You want to be a lawyer when you grow up? Just fix the public masturbation. <laughs> Total bullshit. All right, wow. Keep your voice down. You do not possess the power of speech. All right, hands on hips. All right? Looking strong, looking proud. All right? See <laughs> the bomber, okay? The bomber's the main point, so see it. I see the freaking bomber. You couldn't just pop the dude in front of a flag. Why do we have to come here? Production value, showmanship. Fought the Japanese. What? Fought Japanese. I fought the Japanese. This machine was used in the Pacific, where the Japanese are. Why don't you shut up and learn to take some direction? <laughs> okay, good. You've got red, white, and blue coursing through your veins. Look up! Picture a bald eagle soaring! <laughs> Shit! <laughs> okay, just keep rolling. Tights just wide. Just get me some good air. Tights wide. <laughs> but the second one. Make him some tea, or just better, heat some chicken broth. Just let it simmer. Don't make it boil. That's it. No doctor. That's it. No doctor. He's just got to ride this out. Chuck will be fine. Oh, oh I shit! Go. I just saw the background. <laughs> Rhubarb. 
Idiots, that's a signal. Get him in the chair. <clears throat> Where's the air hose? Stick it in your nose. You know what I this show does really well, and I'm I'm interested to see. I've picked it out recently, um, and I wonder if it's going to be a recurring thing or it's just you know for the sake of just certain shots. Um, they do they they really they do a great job of providing you know a fantastic sort of like medium long shot or medium shot where the character themselves is either in the right hand side or left hand side of the frame towards the bottom of it and you will have the rest as like a backdrop or background whether it's in focus or out of focus now they've done it a lot to kim uh, where Kim is in the left-hand side of the frame a lot. They did it in the scene where she was in the dentist's office, and they did it when she went out of Howard's office after she provided him the news. You know, she was on the left-hand side, and his door was in the right-hand side of the frame, and then he, so, you know, talked about getting Mesa Verde on the phone. And now Saw, uh, sorry, Jimmy here, was in the left-hand side of the frame with Fifi in the background. Now, I wonder if uh, there's going to be a recurring sort of thematic, uh, no, there's going to be a recurring technique with sort of the shots with Jimmy and Kim being in the left-hand side of the frame a lot and Howard and Chuck being in the right and occupying that side of the space like uh, I'm not too sure but like we saw the same right there with Ernie with the house in the background and the car the Evo um, when he was in the right hand side of the frame as well so they really do a great job of getting a lot in frame sir hey this is not a problem would you mind if the guys and I took a picture? Oh, of my. It would mean a lot to us. Yeah, uh, pictures. He loves pictures. Here, give me the camera. Here's your water. Thank, you, Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I thought he background right, checked him. Scoot you in. Swing you around. Okay. How did he milk this? Line up. Smile. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> What? I lost Mesa Verde. I knew it. Far out. What? I had him. I thought I had him. Didn't get it down in writing. What happened? They're sticking with HHM. Paige said they went over there this afternoon for some kind of courtesy meeting or so she thought and Kevin got his head turned. By Howard? No. Chuck. Think about this. Wait, whoa, nothing's changed. No, nothing's changed? We're about to sign a very expensive lease after a very sizable chunk of income just went flying out the window. That's why we're a team. <laughs> Something like this happens. You're there to help me. I'm there to help you. Hey, there will be other Mesa Verdes. See, Jimmy's good at taking hits and bouncing back. Like... You still want to do this? Kim took a hit and really started to doubt a lot of it. <laughs> but I think even Jimmy knows deep down, like, we've got to work our way up a lot here. We lost a big client um, and he just wanted to, you know, keep the confidence with Kim right there. I'd be curious to see if Mike is the one that puts Hector in the wheelchair in Breaking Bad. And he's the one that puts him in the state he was in. There's that ice cream truck again. Okay, now this is not right right here. <laughs> Taking advantage of the documents being at Chuck's house. <laughs> Unless he's just doing the work for him and helping Chuck out. No, it looks like he's going to be photocopying him. But uh, I want to read what was on that letter quickly. Oh, 
Oh, this is Mesa Verde instructing another firm. Oh, authorizing another firm to act on their behalf. Okay, interesting. Is he gonna forge it? And it's gonna come off in the copying as well. It's gonna come out clean. Oh, he just changed the addresses or the... Yo, you can't tamper documents like that. <laughs> That is wrong on so many levels. If he gets caught here and Chuck wakes up, oh boy. See, Jimmy occupies the left hand side of the frame a lot of the time. My work here is done. He spent the better part of a day watching you do your impression of a baked potato. I told him to go home and get some shut eye. <laughs> Standing up for Ernie, shout out. No, I'm fine. I know we have our issues, but if things were reversed, I hope you know that I would do the same for you. Cap. He guilt tripping him. Is that Kaylee? Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> you done this before? No, not like this. But we learned about fractions in school. You did? What fractions? Half inch, quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth inch. Yo, she got attitude this one. You know, I gotta tell you, <laughs> you were much smarter than I was when I was your age. Maybe you needed better teachers. That could be. Can I do the drill now? You promised. Oh. I did, didn't I? Work, health, and safety. Right. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, get up here. <laughs> Now you're gonna have to wear these if you're gonna handle the heavy machinery. Why don't you have to wear them? Because pop ups are grown up, and grown ups get to be stupid. Now put them on. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. It's because it's heavy. Pull. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> you, mm -hmm. you line them up for me. We're back here. I needed a soaker for the rhododendrons out back. <laughs> Pop-Up's gonna have to finish this project on his own because we have to go. Well, we're not done yet. No, I'll finish up. She drilled I'm one, old man. Lady, we're a big help. Give me a hug. Ooh, love you, girl. Love you. Thanks, Mike. Oh, you're so good for Friday. Absolutely. I'll think of another project, buddy. <laughs> Fantastic. Bye. Bye. To help out with his um, mischievous dealings with the cartel. <laughs> Fire <laughs> already. I cannot break you. Will you take your hands off me? What are you playing, Nazi pet? I'll listen more. You are no longer. Oh, is he going to try and flatten their tires? Oh, and the next episode's titled Nailed as well. <laughs> but yeah, uh, listen, these, these, oh man, this show is becoming like, not, un like, it's just, 
The show is not letting you know its next move. Just when you think you have things sorted out and predicted. The same with Breaking Bad as well. Um, something would happen uh, with the characters or like it's never secured. It's never in the bag until like you actually physically see it happen. It's never in the bag. Listen, it was all good. And I said it might have been all good, but you got to get that thing in writing, especially with um, Mesa Verde right there. They gave you a word, but like I said, this, the show throws another spanner in the works. And yeah. I think the obvious thing that it's leading towards is a 2v2 with Kim and Jimmy going up against Chuck and uh, Howard down the line. Whether it is the Mesa Verde case or um, the other one with the elderly people. I forgot what it was. Um, I can't believe I forgot what it was called. But either whether it's that one, Mesa Verde or something else pops up, it's going to be interesting to see. So yeah, and I'm going to get in to the next episode right after this anyway so i'm gonna see what's gonna unfold anyway so yeah i hope you guys are enjoying my reactions as always be your boy the moses take care god bless peace